Oh, man. Uh, another day, man, I just swapped, swapping the batteries out in this rig, man. One of my batteries had went dead, so I... That's what I was doing when you called me the first time. <laughs> man, what, I mean, you, 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 you a jack of all, man. You a jack of all out here, man. From, from yeah, being, from, from being, in, from being incarcerated all the way down to, uh, all the way down to being a driver. Now, now owner, and now you, you work on your trust too, man. That's what's up. All you have to do is stay. Yes, sir. That's what's up. What's going on, everybody? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And welcome back to another episode. This is the Lockout Men Podcast Show. How y'all doing out here? You know what's up. My name is Lockout Men. I'm glad that you guys could join me this morning. And in this episode, this is a Lockout Men Podcast interview. Y'all know what's up. Y'all seen it. Y'all see it on the uh on the thing, and you guys know who I'm about to talk to right quick. So I want to welcome in the LOM community. You know what I'm saying? What's up to everybody there? Yo, if you guys like content like this and more, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share, and hit that bell and that all button. You know what I'm saying? Y'all get, y'all, when y'all hit that bell and that all button, let me explain something to you because I talked to my man G718 yesterday. You know, we chopped it up and all like that. A lot of things went on yesterday, too. I, I probably might touch on that with my uh, special guest today, too. But, um, but YouTube, you know, just seems just seems like it's not, you know, it's it's not helping small small channels to to grow. I mean, that's 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 just my opinion. But if you guys hit that all button, y'all know whenever I come up on live or when I drop a video or something like that. If you guys want to support the channel, you can do that because when y'all do it through YouTube, YouTube don't give a shit. I'm just saying, but if you guys want to hook us up with something like that or hook me up with some coffee, the cash app and the coffee app is in the description below. And you guys could go ahead and uh, hook a brother up with some coffee or something like that. You know what I'm saying? Well, and like I said earlier in today's episode, it's a podcast interview. And today I want to bring on to the show my man, Sharif Zulu. <laughs> Did I did I pronounce it right, bro? Did I did I get it right, man? Did I get it right? I I I got it right. I I got it right the first time, man. Yes, sir. You did. I appreciate it. All right. All right, pimp. All right. All right. So so since I got it right, man, why don't why don't you tell everybody uh, about your name? What's what is what is the meaning behind your name? Because you know, I, I know a lot of I know a lot of cats <laughs> with, with the word Zulu in their name, like Zulu Nation, Shaka Zulu, uh, you know, the guys, you know, the guys that use that the the last name for for it for power. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? What's what's the meaning behind yeah. your what's the meaning behind your name? Um well a good brother of mine that's um that taught me a whole lot, man. Really about life. Um, he named he named he, he named me Sharif, and uh, he gave me that name because he said, "Man, what's in you was already in you. You know, it was it was it was nothing really outside of you that 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 brought you to the point where you're at now. So the word Sharif means to be high minded, mm -hmm. to be have to have good manners, to be born a king, and um, to be above anything that's petty." So that's where I, that's 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 where I get that name from. Um, the last name Zulu, my brother used to always call me that because he said, "Man, you 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 stay on some black stuff, man. So I'm gonna call you Zulu." So <laughs> that's how I, that's how I put the name together, man. It was two brothers used to always um, uh, talk to me and kick it with me. So they gave me the name Sharif Zulu, and ever since then, that's that's just what I've been going by. That's um, that's the that's the resurrected version of me. Okay, that's what's up. That's what's up, man. Well, let's start with uh, let's let's start with your little, your background for a little bit before we uh before we jump in jump into your into your trucking story, man. Where uh where where are you from, man? Like you know where where are you from? And where are you from? Okay, I'm from 
I'm from St. Petersburg, Florida, born and raised. Okay, that's what's up. That's what's up. Well, what was life like down in Florida, man? Um, my life was pretty good growing up until uh crack cocaine epidemic hit like in the mid eighties. Um, you know, my dad he wanted to experiment with it, and uh, unfortunately, him and my mom got hooked, and that led to you know my neighborhood that was pretty good turning into a rundown abandoned house. Basically, hell. Mm. Um, when I was about eight or nine, my oldest aunt took custody of me. Um, mm-hmm. But I really couldn't see that she was trying to help. All I wanted to do was go back home. So, you know, me and I had some trouble. Um, got in a lot of trouble in school and um, ended up getting kicked out of regular school and going to um, an alternative school. One really feeling that. But it's crazy, I always stayed in school. Um, my mom and dad, they kicked the habit for a minute, and I ended up going back home, but they end up um, Getting right going back right back it. to the habit. This goes on to the early 90s, around 92, 93. And um, my mom, they pretty much split up. My mom kicked the habit, but my dad, he wouldn't. So... Um, him working at, the, at what's called a Tropicana Field. Now his foot got infected. He ended up having to get one of his legs amputated, and that still wasn't enough. He still didn't learn. Oh. So um, he ended up dying in 1996. Um, I was staying out. It was, it was just me and my mom after that. Um, she was doing the best she can, but she didn't want to retool and go back to school to learn anything. She's been a cook basically all her life, so that's what she wanted to do. So she had on and off jobs cooking. By that time, I was in the street because I was a teenager. So, you know, I'm doing the usual stuff. You know, every, every, any any black team around the area was doing, you know, I'm selling drugs and selling cars. And But like I said, I always, I always went to school. In 1990, I graduated Oxford High School and, uh, in Florida. And um, I didn't have any, any direction. You know, um, that same year, I ended up having my son in September, and um, I basically was in, in and out of county jail, no direction. Um, my my son's mom, you know, her parents went through the same thing, but she was never really in the street. Uh, we kind of depended on each other. We got our own apartment, and um, right after that, I ended up going to uh, going to prison for the first time in 2000. I only had a year. I got out. Went right back about a year later with a five-year kid and, and left her out here, you know, again by herself trying to raise my son. Mm-hmm. She was doing the best she could. And um, she, she, she ended up going to college and also taking care of my son at the same time. Mm-hmm. The second time I went to prison, she was pregnant with my daughter, and she had to go through that by herself. Um, she's a real strong woman. She made it. When I was, my daughter was born, I, I was locked up. Um, got out, stayed out, you know, for about three years, ended up going back again. And, uh, that's when I came up with the whole thing about trucking. Um, uh, well, let's, let's hold up before, let's, was, let's, let's hold up before you, be, before we touch on, uh, before we yeah. touch on trucking, man. Um, you, you mentioned, you know, you, you mentioned in, into your story, man, and it, it's, it's, it's a great coming of age story. You know, it's just unfortunate that, mm-hmm. your, that, you know, that your father wasn't able to kick his habit before he, uh, before he passed, but before he passed, uh, was you and your father close? Mm-hmm. Was, was you, was you still, was you, was you, was you guys yeah. still bonding with each other? What, what was, uh, what was that like with, with just you and your father before I touch on yeah. your mother? Okay, well, me and my dad, I had a resentment towards my dad when I learned actually what the habit was. Mm-hmm. Because I remember being in the car the day he brought the dope home. And I know before then, him and my mama used to smoke weed, they drank, you know, and stuff like that. They had friends that smoked weed and drank. But I, I, to this day, I still remember that day when he came and got me from the bus stop and he stopped to go buy that crack. And that pretty much changed the direction of my family. Um... I didn't stay mad at him. I, I don't hate him now. Um, before he passed, we, we we did have a relationship because 
my dad was in the army, so he was at the VA hospital when he passed. So I used to go out there every weekend and go see him. You know what I mean? I, I, I used to get city bus out there to go see him. We hang out for a little while, go get something to eat. We talk and, 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 and you know, hang out for a little while. And, um, you know, unfortunately, when he did pass, um, I went to a juvenile program and I skipped over that. I went to, I went to juvenile program and when I got out, um, his eyesight had got bad and basically it took two nurses for him to do everything, mm. you know, because he wouldn't take the habit. So I went, I see, I see to go visit him, go hang out with him and talk to him and stuff. And his eyesight got bad and he couldn't really move around. He lost his independence. And, um, you know, in 1996, I was in high school, so one day when I came home, you know, from school, my mom told me that, you know, he passed. You know what I mean? I'm like, damn. And what's crazy, what, what made me made, made me re- real mad about it is that he passed, and they buried him, and then they let us know. You know, they, they we didn't get a chance to view the body or anything like that. So, you know, the next time I seen, you know, my dad, he was in the grave. And um, that was like a, a hurting thing because, you know, even though he was losing his senses and he, he was blind, he was, his vision was bad, he still could communicate with me and I, I, I can fully understand what he's saying. So it hurt me to see him go out like that because you didn't want to shake your habit. You know what I mean? So in my lifetime, that led to me not even smoking weed. I, I don't drink, I, you know, any of that. You know what I mean? Because I, cause to me, all those things were gateway drugs for them that led to them you know i was being I, what they were i i was just about to ask you that man because you know a lot of a lot of guys today you know a lot of today guys you know weed is uh is you know weed is uh Smoke weed you know day. weed is 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 available now is 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 uh is exactly. legal now so i was going to ask you exactly. and, and see if you felt that is is weed you know, like you said, is is weed to you is a gateway drug to other drugs out here to try? To me, to me, to me, it is. Like I said, I know a bunch. Of, like my my cousin, me, him close, and he smoked weed. That's that's the thing. You know what I mean? But to me, in my lifetime, I've never seen a period of time where my parents didn't smoke cigarettes, smoke weed, and drink. And to me, when you're Bringing all those things into your life, it 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 it's a to me it it just leads to you doing harder drugs, you know what I mean? So so to me right now, I to me my opinion on it depends on a person's personality. My parents had an addictive personality. My cousin don't, you know what I mean? To some people, it's just their drug of choice. But in my life, I've seen that just lead to things that's just that's crazy. So. To me, it is. It's just a gateway drug to get to another drug because you only can get so high, and then you know you look, you're looking for something else. But like I said, it also depends on the person's personality. You know, they could be, you know, well, uh, they just want to smoke a joint and that's it. And uh, they they're what's called what I call social smokers. They might only smoke when they go to the club or smoke when they with their partners. They don't smoke by themselves. You know what I mean? But to me, a person that just can smoke all day long, even when you're by yourself. So later that leads to you doing other things. You know what I mean? Okay. But just seeing my parents go through that, I was always scared of drugs. I used to sell them with, with no problem. You know, I sell them quick, but as far as me doing them, no, I, I it, it scared now, the hell out of me because what I see my parents do. Sharif, man, let me let me let me let me play devil's advocate on you for 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 a good okay. second. Um now you said okay. that now you have seen what it done to your family. You have seen when it does what it done to your to your, you know, your moms and your pops and all like that, but you, 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 yeah. you yourself migrated to the streets, and and I know, you know, you became, you know, we we got to, you know, if we in a situation, you know, we got to figure out how to take care of our families, and 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 drugs was, you know, back then in the eighties, nineties, you know, was was the thing to do for for young uh, for young black men. After seeing what it all mm-hmm. done, you know, you seen when it did to your family. Why did you, you know, migrate it to to selling the product? Well, because basically, 
I needed money. You know what I mean? And I've never been a burglar, you know, a uh, car thief, or, uh, you know, going to store and go to stealing. That I that that wasn't my thing. I, I never felt comfortable doing anything like that. You know what I mean? And then growing up, I seen a few dudes also get killed. You know, going to somebody's house. You know, you get right. caught breaking into somebody's house, and you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. So right, right. that really was my thing. Uh, I see chasing on the on the mm-hmm. on the you know with the cars and stuff like that. To me, growing up, that wasn't gangster. To me, being gangster, I can go in the store and buy and walk out it's like it was no problem. Right. So. Not only at the time, well, with my parents doing what they was doing, we fell like my family fell so fast because like my mom was a dietitian. She she was she worked at the Humana Hospital, and she was right diet side for people that's diabetics and stuff like that. Right. My daddy worked at the airport, and he and he used to you know fuel the plane. So we had a to me you know a good middle class type life until the the, the drug hit. So when I went from you know, the house being quiet and things are being the way they are to me, basically, you know, wearing shoes with holes in them and, you know, wearing pants and clothes and stuff that's too small because I'm growing too fast and, you know, all the money is gone and I can't get any school clothes, anything that fit. I knew that's what I had to do. So when I got to be a teenager, that's when I got out and I, I got out and hit the streets. I learned how to sell weed. I learned how to sell crack, you know what I mean, and, and stuff like that. And it got to the point where, I used to have to hide my dope when I came home because my parents were still from me. Mm. You know what I mean? Because they, they knew what I was doing because they see how I'm dressing and, you know, the extra, extra change I got. And I was, you know, it's been times I come home, I knew they'd have been in my room looking for it. You know what I mean? The room tore up and stuff like that. So that was like, it was a trying time because I'm selling the same stuff that's, that's basically got y'all, you know, pretty much ready, ready to kill each other because, Domestic violence set in. I'm seeing what it's doing, but at the same time, I, I'm, I'm going to ignore that because I want the money. Okay, you know what I mean? Because that that kind of gave me some peace because I can buy what I want, and I'm basically right. trying to find a, a emotional safe haven in buying stuff. Right, and, and that's what um was kind of was kind of crazy, you know. All right, man. You know, first I want to I, I I appreciate you coming on to uh, sharing your story, man. I know I know you know trying to you know go back and relive it relive it is kind of you know hurtful coming up, but you had to do what you had to do, man. And I I appreciate you you know doing that. But uh, in the midst of doing no all in the midst of doing all that, bro, you got uh of course you you got hemmed up. Uh, why you, you know, why you locked up? I, I, I'm going to assume you figured that the life that you was living prior to getting locked up, you knew that that life wasn't going to last too long. You know what I'm saying? You either was going to, you either was going to continue your your life in incarcerated, or you was going to end up, you know, end up dead. And you know, and and your your girlfriend. Yeah or your girlfriend or your wife was going to end up raising their, raising your kids uh, fatherless. So at the time, at, yeah. the, at of course you got, you know, hemmed up when at that point you realized that it was time to make a change. Hello. Oh, uh Oh, uh, there we go. We, we lost con- we lost contract yeah, sorry, there, bro. <laughs> nah, you good? Did you hear the All question? Right. Did you hear the question before we got? Before no, we- you called. You asked the question. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, I was saying, being that you know you was incarcerated, when at when at that point you realized it was time to make a change in your life. Well, it was my third time being incarcerated, and um. I was walking past a, uh, I, I, I was in prison w- walking past uh, the uh, the chapel, and um, I ended up hearing a speech from Minister Louis Farrakhan, and he ended up saying, that, you know, because you want your daughter to date a guy like you. And, um, you know, instead of me, you know, getting my feelings back like I was talking thing in the world, I had to admit, no, you know, no. Not, not, not what I got going on, you know, mm-hmm. and that's when I became, you know, more conscious of what's going on when it comes to my children just being black, period. Mm-hmm. So, me growing up, 
you know, I didn't have a lot of examples of positive relationships between, you know, black men and black women. Mm-hmm. And and me and my children, mom, we got together because we were physically attracted to one another. We really had nothing in common. Okay. You know, we really didn't get along or, or whatnot. And unfortunately, you know, this third bid that I, that I had to do, you know, I would have got way more time than I had because she took the stand on me and I stopped the trial and I, I took the plea and I ended up going to jail. And basically she did that for being mad because I was getting ready to leave her. And and, and I, I was I was just tired of the argument and the going back and forth. And it was really, I, I'm really there for the children because they want me to be in the house with them every day, all day because they love me. Mm-hmm. But trying to force that to work, end up, you know, putting her in a better place with me and that's one of the the, the the things that hurt with me being in prison that my kids never knew my side of the story. They only knew what her family and her side told her. So when I seen that sign, I ended up going to solitary confinement probably about a week later. And I had I had sixty days to do in, in confinement and I got a father's day card from my children. And at that time I hadn't heard from them in almost two years because their mom wouldn't let me call, they nobody answered letters and then they moved. They had fell out, my children had fell out with my mom. And at the time they were, you know, just getting to the end of middle school. A lot of stuff was going on at that time. And um I end up coming into a uh, CDL book when I was in confinement and it was basically about diesel period, talking about diesel mechanics, stuff like that. So basically my first Mine was to become a diesel mechanic. That's what I wanted to do. I wanted to get out, be a mechanic, fix 18-wheelers, caterpillars, you know, have equipment and stuff like that. Okay. okay. But I'm looking at time, the time frame. And it's go take, it'll take at least a year to get that done. But I'm like, okay, I'm getting out of prison. I really don't have a place to stay because I'm not going to my, my children's mama house. I, I'm too old to go to my mama house. So I'm like, I need something fast. Okay. So that's when I thought about the whole truck driving thing. And, um... I decided when I was in solitary confinement in 2016 that I was going to be a truck driver. I wrote all my goals down. I, 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 didn't, do, I, I didn't know anything about it. And at that point in time, I started studying everything I could about it. I met a few truck drivers in prison. Same thing. They couldn't kick drug habits, so they would drive, but also end up getting, you know, messed up because they wouldn't, uh, they wouldn't stop drugs. So, But they taught me a whole bunch. They told me all the truck driving stories and about what you got to do, what you got to know. You know, some of these guys have been on operators before. Some of them had just been company drivers and that was it. So I just took it all in. And um, I end up finding it was only two camps in Florida that offered the CDL course. You, you can't get the CDL in prison, but basically you can study to learn how to take the test. But by the, you know, by the time I got to those programs, I had them to memorize the CDL book. Okay. And, um, so, so you, so yo, so so yo, so yo interest, your interest in in the trucking industry came from, uh, just came from being incarcerated and and just, just kind of got a, just kind of got a love of just reading the 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 CDL books and what they had to had to, and what they had to offer, and then some, like you exactly. said, some of the OGs. Some of the OGs just came, you know, just came your way and just said, you know, just told you how how the trucking game was, and you you pretty exactly. much got you pretty much got interested in from from that point. Let me ask you this: How yes, for hey, you for, take my phone? Yeah, I hear you, sir. Let me ask you this, man: How do you know from you know you being the felon? Mm-hmm. Uh, you been a felon after you came out of, uh, you know, after you came out of prison doing your bid. How hard was it uh, after you got your license? How hard was it for you to 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 jump on with a company? Oh man, that was that was a trial to see if I really wanted it because the first because I couldn't find a company to get on with because the first place I tried, me not knowing anything about the trucking industry. I ran to the mega carriers, you know, Swift, uh, um, CR uh, England, uh, uh, CRST. Yeah. 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 So I ran to the mega carriers cause I'm like, boy, okay, I'm getting on with them. So now Swift's telling me I got to go to, uh, 
the roll of mass, start with the roll of mass, did the application, put everything in. They told me no because I'm a fan. So um, I went to like two other places and they were like, well, you know, you can get your CDL here, but, you know, ain't no telling when, um, when, uh, if, if, if you will go get a job. So I'm like, man, I'm, 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 I'm really frustrated. So the last place I contact was CRST and I, I had this bad idea. I'm like, okay, I'm going to tell them, yeah, I've been to prison, but I'm, I'm going to put on the application the date that I got arrested. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Not. Right. Not 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 the bid not the bid time not not the bid time exactly. you, you put in you put did, in did I got okay okay yeah that that way I know I'd be at least five years from the last time I had uh I got arrested so that's what I did and I'm sitting around moping looking crazy uh, I, I was doing uh. Air conditioning work because I mean, don't get me wrong. Along, along this path, I, I'd have had some damn good help. I met a guy in jail who got out. He has his own air conditioning business now. He does commercial residential, mm-hmm. and um, and and um, he he, he get, I, when I got out, I got in contact with him. The man gave me a job, so I was doing I was doing I was doing um, uh, installing uh, air conditioning in people's houses and also in restaurants and stuff. I, I was learning that too. Okay. So let's say you know. They say, you know, I get a call, and it's the RSP. They're like, yeah, we know we got your application. When can you start orientation? I'm like, oh, man. I'm like, yeah, when can I come? They're like, listen, we're going to give you a bus ticket to come to Jacksonville. We'll put you up in a hotel. You, we go feed you and um, uh, help you get your CDLs. But what, what we want to do is to work for us for 10 months after you get your license. Okay. So I'm like, oh. So I'm like, okay, cool. I'm on my way. I'm like, oh, um, I just got out. I'm, I'm getting my food stamp. So I'm like, I'm cool. This eliminated all my bills. No light bill, water bill, none of that. So I typed up ASAP. Got on the bus. It was a four-hour ride on the Greyhound to get to Jacksonville. So, you know, I got I got there, took the class. Um, I took I, I took the pre-trip. And what's crazy about it, I'm so, I'm so enthusiastic about it because I got my permit before I got there. Okay. So, so I already had my permit when I when I came there. So now that that takes about you know two weeks out the class. So I'm thinking I'm, I'm, I'm gonna finish fast. And I, in my first test, I failed a damn pre trip. Uh, and um, I, I failed a pre trip because I didn't know anything about the splitter when you're driving a ten speed. And the instructor that drove the truck over to do the pre trip, he didn't put the splitter down. So when I went to do the service brake test. The truck sputtered and cut off, and, and that, that was an automatic fail. Yeah, and I'm like, hold on, I, I, I haven't been in auto shifting yet because you can't check that until you get done the pre trip. I, I don't know a damn thing about a splitter, so how can you fault me for this when I don't know anything about it? So I failed the test. I'm mad as hell. <laughs> and uh, the next time I passed, you know, with flying colors, that's, and um, that's and then when I got ready, when I got ready to take the road test, uh-huh. the dang old school closed down. What? Yes. Yeah. yeah, man. Did you, still, they, they, did, you st- did you did you still get your did you still get your license? I mean, what, did you still get your license? Oh. Hey, it's funny. I'm, I'm gonna tell you what happened. Right, this is what I had to do. I had to come back to St. Pete, and I had to pay a third party tester to give me the opportunity to, to take the road test. Wow. So, so this is so wait, paid, this, this is this is CRST, right? <laughs> that this is this is CRST <laughs> that that shut down their their schooling part of their right. the company. Yeah, no, I'm saying it was just that one. Somehow, some way that it was going through something with J Tech. Okay. And that, that that was the name of the school. And they got into a conflict about it and they closed it down, man. And they, wow. they just sent everybody they sent everybody home, man. Wow. And um so I done passed everything. I have been on the road about four or five days. I'm ready to test. Okay. You know what I mean? Now I got my shift down. You know, the instructor done taught me how to skip shift. I'm just, I'm, I'm ready. Okay. So, yeah. So next day, you know, I got to pay this one place. Um, I got to pay them 420 files for a road test. But so did, did what, what, why did you, why, why did you have to pay for it if CRST was the one that was, that was paying for everything, and 
be, because, because the testing wasn't at CRSC. Once oh. they shut the school down, I had to go to a third party tester. Okay, okay, so, okay, 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 okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Exactly. So I paid the third party tester. I paid him the three, um, the three, uh, the, I mean the four fifty. Mm-hmm. I get in. I take. I take the test. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, I'm gonna destroy this test. He got a day cab with a, a, tw- a 28 foot trailer. I'm gonna murder this. I've been training this. <laughs> I'm gonna get in and murder this. Okay. So I get in. I'm driving out of town. You know, probably about 15, 20 minutes. He's like, "Yeah, man, I like you shifting." And he just having a conversation with me. Okay. So we on the road going back to the cliff, to the place. I done aced everything. He's talking to me. Yeah, this, that, and the third. Okay. Man, I get halfway down that road. He say, man, I got to give you some bad news. I'm like, what do you say? I got to fail you, man. You, you fail the test. What? I'm like, what? For what? He say, he say, man, how fast can you go on an unmarked road? Oh, I said 30. man. I said 35. He say, he say, he say, he say, he say, he say, he say yeah. But you're doing forty two. Oh, he say in Florida, he, he say he, he say he, the man say in Florida, you can only go six miles an hour over, over the, the speed, speed limit, limit on your set. If not, it's an automatic fail. But wait a minute, so no, wait, 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 stop! Hold up, bro! Wait a minute! Wait a minute, man! This, this dude, this dude, man, this dude. Y'all over here chopping it up, y'all chilling, y'all having a good ass time. And this, you talking this, about this, football and football, man. And this <laughs> motherfucker turns around and tell you, "Oh man, I'm sorry, I gotta fail you." I would have been like, bro, why you didn't fucking tell me that I was like on an unmarked road at least? Yeah. I mean, man, you having a good ass time and shit. But yeah, over the same thing with us, man. Over in uh over in Ohio, you know, an unmarked road, we can only do about 25 and all like that. Now the yeah. officer officer says that um that it's like like 35, but he said to be on the safe side if if you don't see no markings or anything like that is 25. And that's and that is good to know for for a lot of people out here, especially, you know, not just truck drivers but just, you know, uh car drivers as well because you know, we we be zooming up and down these fucking unmarked streets mm-hmm. not knowing what the speed limit is and then when we get pulled over by Johnny Law, you know, he him us yeah. up for giving us a ticket and I'm like, "Bro, I ain't no fucking Ain't no fucking speed limit signs around here, man. So, yeah, but if, yeah, but if you go up and down, yeah, if you go if you go up and down the street, it's it's twenty five miles an hour. I didn't know that uh, shit. <laughs> yeah, man. Wow. So yeah, I, I couldn't believe it. But long, st- but long story short, on that yeah. one, you you went back in and, and and you 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 yeah. aced it and got your license, man. Yeah. So, yeah, I I went back and, and, and they gave me a discount of three twenty five. Okay. So I paid and this time I made sure and I went down that same road, I did thirty. Oh, okay. That's what's <laughs> up. So after after, after getting your after getting your license and everything, yeah. Did that was July July fourth last year. Did did C R S T uh you you didn't have to pay you didn't you you didn't owe CRST anything then because you went to oh, yeah. a third you went oh, yeah. to a third what wait wait what you went to a third party oh, yeah. to get your I, license though they sent me they said I still owe them I still owe them for the hotel room and the food they supplied and they sent me a bill for nine hundred and seventy five dollars and. They wanted the money, and they said if I didn't pay them within the next six months, they would send it to a bill collector. Oh my god! The, the, the hotel, oh, yeah. the hotel stay and and fucking food, man. You are you serious? And, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna have to give them up a yes, buzzer for that. Shit, man. That, that, <laughs> that, that that's crazy. You, I, 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 I went to spend an extra four hundred dollars to get my license. Only thing y'all motherfuckers yeah. did for me was just give me somewhere to fucking stay, and I, y'all was supposed to do that anyway. <laughs> so did you, did you, did you get in with them? Did you, did you drive for them, or, no. or you, you, I, you stepped? I, I never drove with them. That, that, that's what they did. After I passed my test, 
The recruiter called me back and told me the school was back open. He wanted me. I told him, I said, well, listen, this is when I got my CDLs already. So he's like, well, listen, you still have the 10-month contract to honor. So do you want to do CRSD expedited and team drive for the next two months? I'm like, hell no. For 31 cents a mile? Hell no. <laughs> no, I'm not doing that. <laughs> oh man, that's that's crazy, man. That's crazy. But why all all the time that you uh you, you sounded kind of muffled. There you go. All the time that all, all the time that you was going through this, uh going through this process, man, how did you handle the discouragement? Um this was the biggest thing to come out of prison, man, and a lot of brothers will experience this, but it, it, it hit me hard. When I came out here, it was so many people that I knew that has more education than I do, has been in the workforce longer than I have, but they're still in the same spot. In that same and I'm like, mindset. I've been gone seven years. How do I get back and y'all still in the same spot? You still struggling to take, take it to take it and not do anything. So that was the first discouragement. I'm like, if they struggling, how the hell I'm going to make it? You know what I'm saying? So that was the first, you know, you know thing that, 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 that had me you know, absolutely like, what what the hell am I going to do? And what I had to remember, man, is that I'm me. You know, when I, when I set my mind to do something, I've always accomplished it. You know, so I've got to get my mind off what everybody else is doing and not doing and keep focused on what I got to do. And that's what I kept my mind on the whole time I was going through this. I knew it wasn't going to be easy, you know what I mean? Because nothing in my life has been easy. Right. You know what I mean? So that's why I... That's one of the reasons why I chose flatbed because it, it's a challenge. You know what I mean? I, I don't really like things that's too easy. So, you know, I just stay focused doing, doing, you know, through the turmoil and everything. And, you know, here I am, you know, so, but I'm going to tell you something. The most, the most discouraging thing to me trying to, you know, get in the trucking thing going was not what happened at CRST. My first job I got with Milton truck line. Mm-hmm. Doing flatbed. So I'm like, yeah, I got a job. They sent me the bus ticket for orientation. And I'm like, okay, boom. You know, because I haven't done too much traveling in my life. So I got to go to Birmingham, Alabama for orientation. So, you know, I get there. I go through the orientation. I finish. So now they give us a rental car to go to Tulsa, Oklahoma, so I can meet up with my trainer, you know, and then I got to do 150 hours with him. And then I get my own truck. And then I'm, I'm off on my own. So... I finish everything, get to rent a car, me and four of the dudes drive up there to the wheel nine trainer. I, I check out of the hotel the following day, get to the corporate office, and my trainer's there waiting on me. Right before I get on the damn truck, the guy over the uh, the new new recruits coming in called me in the office and told me he's got to let me go. Oh, wow. And I'm like, why? He said, man, um, we have a, a law here in Oklahoma where we have, we, when you have, when you owe a lot of restitution to a, to a, to a, uh, for, for a court case, that they can take your life. I say, well, sir, that, that, that's, they don't do that in Florida. You, you can owe the court a million dollars. The only thing they're going to do is put a lien, put a lien on your sentence to collections, and that's it. They don't right. bother your life because you owe the court, you owe court costs. You say, well, um, I'm going to talk to our legal team and see what they want to do. But as far as I know, my boss told me I got to cut you loose. So I sit there for two hours. And finally, he tell me, we got to let you go, man. You owe you owe $16,000 to courts, restitution, court costs, and all the other stuff. And they they, 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 they don't want to take the risk of you being out there on the road and your license get revoked. I'm like, sir, this case is seven years old. If they, they were going to revoke my license, they would have. They would have done it. You know, I, I don't owe them anything. And he didn't want to hear what I'm saying, man. So I had to catch the ground from Oklahoma all the way back to St. Petersburg, Florida. You talking man. about something that was discouraging and hurting? Boy, look at here. That's, that was the most hurting thing I ever had in my life because I knew I made it. I finally did it, and that happened. Man. But that was the most discouraging thing that ever happened to me. Well, so let's, let's, uh, let's, fast, forward to, uh, let's fast forward a little bit. Uh, after yeah. every af, after everything you went through, man, you 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 sort of you sort of sit back, relax, bottled all that stuff up, and you decided that you wanted to go owner operator. Uh, what was what yeah. was the what was the route? Uh, we already know what pushed you towards yeah. owner operations, but what was the route yeah. that you took to get there? 
Well, the right the, the, the route I took was um uh my first job, driving job I got was Western Express. I left them and went to Decker for a better paying job. You know, I need I, I and, need something for Western Express, man. I I I can't give I can't give I can't give the buzzard. I can't give the Okay, I can I can give that. I can give that to Western Express because everybody, including, you know, including felons and everything, I gotta I, I gotta give it to them because they will give you they the will chance. Hire, no problem. They'll hire you. Exactly. They'll give you That's the yes, chance. Sir. But Listen, I ain't got I, I really have nothing bad to say about them. It's just, just I just wanted to get my 90 days and get on to a better company, but the only bad thing I got to say was they left me stranded in California, man. My deaf my deaf system went bad, the deaf sensor, and they made they told me it was gonna take them two weeks to get the part. Wow. I had already been out on the road for a month and they wouldn't even get me a plane ticket home. They got me a bus ticket. I had to catch the Greyhound from Cal I, I had I, I had to catch the Greyhound from birth of our San Bernardino, California, all the way back to Florida, three and a half days. Oh. Boy, look at him. That that was that was that was a ride there. And I'm talking about that's woo. What's with this? What's, what's, with, this, what's with this greyhound <laughs> shit, man? What's up with this greyhound <laughs> shit? What the fuck? Like they couldn't give you a ticket, a plane ticket? Did oh, they, they said they, they they said they said they don't do that. And the most they'll give me off the plane ticket was what the ground ticket was gonna cost, which is like a hundred and seventy dollars. They say we'll give you that off the plane ticket, and I ain't want to leave all my stuff in the truck. So stuff stuff I had to. Take with me. So now my plane ticket with all my stuff to get back will be like four hundred dollars. So I'm like, you know what? Wow. Let me just go ahead and get on the Greyhound. I got. It. Then I had to catch the Greyhound back out there to get my truck. Uh, come on now! <laughs> come on now, man! <laughs> Ooh, I, listen, that was that was seven days on the Greyhound, man. Between between going there and going back, you talking about seven days, man? But I just feel like I had to pay my dues. I'm like, I'm just getting into it. Y'all, y'all did give me a chance. I really, I really ain't gonna go back and forth with y'all about it. You know what I mean? So I did it, man. You know, that was that was a hell of a journey there, man. A hell of a journey there. So how? <laughs> so so in in going through that, going through the, the those issues and everything, man. Where where did you? How again? How did you become, you know, how did you get the truck? Would uh did you have to have credit? Did you lease the truck oh, on what? on the company or or what? Because I'm, I'm looking I'm looking at your pictures, man. I'm 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 looking at your pictures. You 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 standing yeah. next to some nice trucks, especially this uh this blue Mac that you standing next to looking like a looking like a serious boss okay. on that bitch, man. So how did you how how did you Okay <laughs> I hear you, my bad. <laughs> how, how did okay, you? the blue. Mac. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. Okay, okay, the blue Mac was my last company I worked for. Great company, I love. Mm -hmm. that, that 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 was that, that was my first day with the company. That, that was the company that I had before I, before I put my two weeks notice in before I bought my truck. Mm -hmm. The white Volvo is actually the one you see me standing next to. That's my truck. Oh, okay. Okay, so what what I did was I drove for them and Decker and also uh, Western Express. And I basically stayed in the truck. I didn't own a car. I didn't get a house. When I came home, came home in a truck. That's where I stayed at. And I stayed all my money. You know, wasn't no clubbing. You know, I ain't got no habits or nothing. And I stayed every dime I had. Um, so about a month ago, no, excuse me, about three months ago, that's when I started. I started looking for a truck. I started my LLC January first. And that's basically that basically that that was the day I quit my job in my mind. Okay, is this working? Is working for the company thing is over with. This, this, this what I planned in 2016. Okay, here we go. So I started my LLC, and then, um, like I said, three months ago, I threw my two weeks notice in, and I started looking for trucks. So I started going to the Richie Brothers auctions on on my off days, and I also started to um look on our. Uh, ironplanet.com and stuff like that. But every time I found a truck, you know, that I thought I could get, I, every time I, I would get outbid it because it was out of my budget because I know it pay for a certain amount of money and a truck will cost a certain amount of money and the truck might even have to get work done. So I got to be able to have, you know, certain money set aside here and there to get things right. So 
I was going to Walmart one day and walked right across the street from Walmart where I stayed, there is a auction place. And I see five semis sitting out there. So I'm like, oh, man. So I come out of Walmart, go across the street. I, I call my dog. I'm like, well, listen, they got five semis out here. I'm trying to figure out when they're going to have this auction. So I popped the hood and all of them. All right. Yeah. So I had, um, I had uh, opened the hood to the trucks, and um, I looked at all of them, and uh, and uh, popped the hood, and just a little bit I learned from watching the certain guys on YouTube about how to check the truck out, go into mechanic shops, ask some questions, and stuff like that. Um, it'd probably be easy in your car because you can get out easy. But um, so the auction came. And I was looking at this freight line, a blue freight line that had like 480,000 miles on it. Mm-hmm. And I got out of it because that truck went for 20. And then the other two was outside my other two other, well, actually, the other three was outside my budget. The last one was a white Volvo. And um, when I won the bid, I couldn't believe it. I'm talking about, man, I, I, I fell on the truck, stood next to it, opened the door, got in and crunk it up and like, damn. So I, I can't believe it, man. How, how much? How much? Was, I, how much was the bid for? What? What you? What you bid it for? Uh oh, I, I, I want, I want the bid for uh, for seventeen thousand. Seventeen? That ain't bad. And man. um, what's the year of the truck? Two thousand thirteen. Wow, seventeen. Well, how many miles? Yeah, on it? I, uh, six hundred eighty thousand. Wow. That ain't yeah, bad, I could, I couldn't believe, it. I couldn't believe it. So. I went in, I went and got the cashier check, came back and paid it off. I drove it straight to the mechanic shop and had them go over it, chain of fluids and more filters and stuff like that. And um, you know, now it's now it's 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 paperwork game, you know. Um I called hell getting insurance. I finally got that, but it's gonna be expensive as hell. And um on the tag place in Florida, they're like a month behind. So um I've got my pre pass, I've got my ELD. Um, and basically, um, I'm basically waiting on my tag and then I can go ahead and get running. I've been looking at the load boards, you know, learning how to negotiate with brokers and, you know, do stuff like that because I'm going to be power only because I don't want to lease the trailer right now. I don't want to, I don't want any payment for anything right now. So what I was going to do is do power only for a few months, save money up again, just go buy me a flatbed trailer. That way I don't have to worry about any payment. That's what's up, man. That's what's up. Now that, that, that how, how does how does it feel, bro? I mean, coming, you know, jumping up from, you know, from a company a company driver to now owning your own truck, and you don't have to be uh, seg- segregated to to company policies and and stuff like that. How, um, how does how how does that make you feel inside? It's a it's, it's a two way street to it, right? Because being a company driver will spoil you. Because uh, uh, you know, an old school dude told me a long time ago when I first started driving. He said, "Man, listen, I'm letting you know now. I'm I'm an owner operator, and the 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 last time you go be in a new truck ever is when you're a company driver. You say you're not mm-hmm. gonna ever have a new truck after this unless you're the lottery or something. And I'm like, yeah. He was like, yeah, man. He's like, man, because I hopped out there and tried to get a new truck, and the new truck is my payment is three grand a month. I'm like, whoa, on top of insurance. He's like, yeah. So I'm used to having, you know, the, the APU on the truck and the, you know, the 2020 right. truck with the TV, refrigerator, right. microwave, right. and all. You right. know what I mean? Right. And I happen to, you, you know, you, you're a cut and drive, you swipe that car, you don't even think about that. Right. You. <laughs> right. Right. So, exactly. <laughs> so when I first go, I went in. Pick my truck up from the mechanic shop. I'm like, I'm gonna go ahead and fill it up. Man, I swipe, I swipe my damn debit card to fill the truck. It was like five hundred dollars. I'm like, oh man. <laughs> so now you know. Now you know. Tell tell us tell tell these uh tell these cats, man, because you know you 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 came from. You came from a hard upbringing. You you came yeah. from you came from doing bids. You came from taking bullshit from companies uh, from companies to now to to now being your own boss, man. Let let these let uh, these new jacks know about uh about taking care uh, uh taking care of your business and how much more how much more that you need to be focused 
in doing so. You know what I'm saying? Because driving the truck, it's, yeah. it, it, it is what it is. But once you go on their operations, yeah. it's all about keeping yeah. that paper. It's all about keeping that paperwork yeah. together. It's all about keeping your booking yeah. together. It's all about, you know, yeah. making sure that uh, you you have you have money for this, you have money for that, and you have money in your pocket. Tell tell these new jets, yeah. uh, tell these new jets your way of 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 doing things, man. Okay, well, my thing is is make sure every every make the biggest thing is make sure you're organized, and that's something I I, I, I have, I've been all my life, and doing this here is an emphasis on that because. Not only do you have to get, you know, your all your stickers you need as far as your IFTA, you're looking at your, your drug test, you got to still take that even though you're an operator. Um, you know, all the type of stuff you have to do to get organized is that you take it for granted and look at that when you're a company driver because you've never seen any of this stuff. But learning, you know, you got to file this, and this is $75, that's $45, this is 120 dollars you know, even when I filed a 2290 highway heavy use tax, that was $521. You know what I mean? And you got to do all this stuff, you know, yourself. And, and you know, make sure you have this stuff. You know, when you're a company driver and you look at that, that permit book they give you and it's sitting there in, 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 you know, the side of your door, once you become an own operator, you got to fill that book up. Mm. And, you know, you, you know your, your DOT, uh, uh, um, um, safety exam you gotta have and it's it's a lot of work but I like the freedom you know what I mean I get to run the way I want to go where I want to I pick the lanes where I go I pick my days that I'm off I, I pick the days that I'm home you know what I mean and that's the freedom I always wanted and also that I'm the first entrepreneur in my family you know nobody's ever owned their own business in my family so I'm the first person to do this and that also that that feels good that I want to leave my children or my grandchildren something besides bills. You know what I mean? That's so hopefully, you know, one day I can have me a small fleet and, you know, probably buy, you know, five or six, maybe even 10 trucks. And, you know, I'm just sitting back booking the loads and got everybody, you know, running and everything's fine. You know, a, a, little, a little mom and pop company. Okay. And so that's, something you have to think of as, as, a, as a company driver. So that's so that's the goal, man. This 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 the goal for you going, you know, going into the future, the, uh, you know, to try to yeah. put something like that together. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, what I mean, I, I just want to, you know, be as I, I want to, I want to, you know, go as large as, as my 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 inspiration will be. You know, what I mean, if 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 if, if it's meant for me to have, you know, five or ten trucks, I'm cool with that. If it's meant for me to only keep this one truck and run and have a good retirement, I'm good with that. You know, it, it, either way it go, you know, I seen this when I thought when I thought this concept up in 2016. I didn't see how far it was gonna go. I thought I'm gonna go with it. You know, so I'm just gonna ride the wave. And it's just, um, you know, reaching back to other brothers that's in prison. I sent them pictures. You know, I, I sent them some change when I can. And the lady who was actually over the CDL class that I took, um, I reached back to her and I sent her videos and me being out there on the road, me securing things, strapping things. And, you know, she's been very supportive, you know, as far as, you know, emailing me back, calling me back, telling me what to do because her and her husband got five trucks. They've been in truck in 21 years. So she's just proud of me because I'm the first person to graduate her class and actually get out here and do something. You know what I mean? So even when I got my first job, you know, I emailed a pictures back and told her what was going on. And, you know, they, they wanted me to come back into the prison and speak, you know, to the brothers that's in the class to let them know, man, it's possible. You know what I mean? And if you, you can, know, if you even can do it, that, if you can do it, they can do it. It's, it's possible. Exactly. You know, exactly. And, and that's, I didn't know it was that big, but you know, I have, I have, I have brothers, you know, that's, you know, older than me because I just turned 40 September 20th. And, you know, I got brothers that send there, you know, at 40, 47, 50, and they want to drive and guide and do do things, the same thing I'm doing. And also brothers that's younger than me, that's 20, 25, they're like, man, you don't know how good it feels to see somebody get out and make it. And, they, and, and I'm like, yeah, I realize that now because 
you know, the recidivism rate so high because you get out and, you know, go back to doing the same thing. Mm-hmm. But them brothers, they, they email me and they call me all the time like, man, you know, thank you, bro, for, 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 for showing me that it's possible. You know what I mean? Because I got out and I stayed at my cousin's barbershop. And I used to just clean up. I cleaned up when he was done cutting and just slept on his floor and paid him what I can. You know what I mean? And just did AC work. And I come from that to own my own truck. You know what I mean? Within within 20 months. So, you know, it's, um, sometimes I look back and I really can't believe it. You know what I mean? But it's just, um, it's incredible, man. You know, when, when you just, everybody, everybody tell me the same thing. Like, boy, you very determined. You very focused. You know what I mean? Because I, I talk about it all the time, and I just stayed on it. You know what I mean? I I, I just I never let up. Sure. So as on operator, I keep that same focus. I want to I want to keep my foot on the gas, never let up. Sharif, yeah, I get his money. Sharif, man, yes, I, I want to thank you for coming on, man. I really do. This is this is very insp- inspirational. You know what I'm saying? You know, for the people that's that's listening to this, hopefully they get inspired and get motivated by, you know, just by listening to your story and taking that and run with it, man. I mean, it's it's real awesome that, you know, you're a positive young black man that came up from, from all the issues in life to out here showing, you know, not only, not only the felons that they can do it, but also young, uh, young black, you know, young black males that might be in the same game as you that you was in back in the day, and showing them that it's something, yeah. it's something out here that's that's different for you, and and you letting you letting trucking, uh, show you the way on that. So I appreciate you coming on here, man. You know, sharing your oh. sharing your story, sharing your experience with me, man. I really do appreciate that. Yeah. And no problem, man. I'm just trying to be a good example for my son and, you know, for my daughter. You know, because my daughter goes to college. She goes to school to Bethune Cookman. And she just turned 20 this year. You know what I mean? So I'm building a relationship with her. And she actually see who I am now because I was gone for so long. And my son the same way, too. You know, they they really getting a load of me and seeing what I'm doing. And they like, you know, Dad, you're you doing your thing. You know what I mean? They call me all the time. And we talk, go out and eat. You know what I mean? And kick it. And they like... You know what I mean? It, it feels good to show them, you know, I'm your best, best black man in your life. That's, that's your, your, your example. That, that way you know what to base your friendship on and also set the bar for yourself. And for my daughter, it's, you know, you know what to look for when, when it comes to you out here trying to get a man. You know what I mean? Because I was never a good example for her being a man. And I know the first relationship any woman has with her father. And that sets mm-hmm. the tone. And, you know, even at her age now, I'm just now really setting the tone where she understands what a man is, what he's supposed to do, you know what I mean, and you know the, his duties and what, what, what he's supposed to handle. But more importantly, her place in the household too. So mm-hmm. that's the thing that really fuels me also to to, 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 to go hard every day is to, to be a shining example for them. You know, because you know when I was young, I never was. That's what's up, man. Sharif Zulu, everybody. Man, this is fucking awesome, man. That's what's up. That's what's up. That's fucking awesome. Uh, one of my, one of one of my, uh, one of one of my, uh, one of my peoples in the uh, LOM community. They they had a question. Uh, he wants to know how many. How, and if you know that, if you know the answer to this, go ahead and answer it because I I don't know the answer myself. But he says, how many years? You got to wait for Western Express to hire you with a felony. Um, n- normally they look they look for it to be like three or more years. You know what I mean? And, and sometimes I don't see them overlook that as long as it's not a sex charge or a murder or something like that. You got a dope charge or you got a pistol charge. It could have been two years ago. They'll go ahead and snatch you on. Just make sure when you're talking about your record, you don't tell them when you got out. You just give them the date you caught the charge. Mm-hmm. That's all you got to do because that's the date they're going to go off of, not when you got out. Don't tell them you just got out. Don't tell them you just got the counter. You just got the feds. Don't do that. Just on the application, when they want to know you got a charge, you put the date you caught the charge, and that's it. 
That's what's up, man. And that's one to grow on right there. You know what I'm saying? My man, uh, Sharice Zulu, once again, give, give this man a round of applause, man. Positive black man out here doing the damn thing. You know, somebody to somebody to look up to and everything, you know, to show, to show the way, man. To show the way. Uh, mm -hmm. Sharif, man, thank you for coming on, man. Thank you for sharing your uh, sharing your stories and all like that, man. And, uh, okay. yeah, that's about it. That's about it. All right. Yeah, I appreciate you, man. Thank, thank you for what you're doing, man. The show you got and how you getting, how you getting the information out there, man. I appreciate you, man. Because it was brothers like you that pushed me on the way since I've been a company driver to be an owner operator, man. Just stopping it, being at the pilots and flying J's and, being in the shower line, kicking it, and they gave me games, telling me what to do, what not to do, and how to handle things, man. It was dudes like you that got me the way I'm at, right? E even in prison, the ones just like you that wanted to talk and, and inspire me to do, you know, do do great things, man. I mean, just keep this show going, bro, because you're you going to reach people that, that you don't even know. I, I appreciate that, man. Thank you very much. And on that note, hey, if you guys want to come on and chop it up with the Lockout Men, you can do that. You can hit me up in the pod, I mean, in the Gmail. That's Lockout Men Podcast at gmail.com. Or you can hit me up over at Instagram, man. You can look me up over there. Or if you're part of the community and you know my government name on, on Facebook, you can look me up over there. With that said, man, I want to thank everybody for watching. I want to thank everybody everybody for listening. If you like content like this and more, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share, and hit that bell and that all button so that you know when the when when the videos and and the lives come on out. On that note, I want to thank my special guest Sharice Zulu for being here. And uh and on that note, we about to get on up out of here. I'll come back at you guys with another video. Y'all take it easy out there. Peace. Yeah, I want to thank you. Thank you very much for coming on and sharing the story. I, I think, uh, you know, somebody out there that that might be in the same position as you, you know what I'm saying, would uh, would, would would find this interview and 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 find some inspiration out of it, man. Yes, yeah, sir. I, I I hope they do, man, because this sometimes you know as you're doing things, you don't look at what you're doing and. I, I, it can inspire somebody else, you know what I mean? And sometimes I have to start with somebody telling me, hey, man, I remember, I, I remember the day you got out, man. You you came up here and you was talking, man. You came in, you know, you got to shave. And I seen you with your cousin in that night. Man, man, this your truck. I'm like, yeah, man, I find, oh, man, I can't believe it. You know what I mean? And same thing. They asked me how I did it, you know, how long did it take and, you know, you know, and stuff like that. And, you know, I hear that at least once a week, you know what I mean? So it was, uh. You know, it 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 make you smile. You know what I mean? It's like, damn, boy. That's Why couldn't I had this mindset ten years ago, boy? <laughs> <laughs> you know, right? All right, man. Well, you stay safe out there. Thanks for the time, bro. And uh, and no if problem. anytime you want to come back on, man, just holler at me and we'll get it done. Sharif Zulu, everybody, man. That's wow. That's 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 a great, great, great story of of how he uh, uh how he came up and uh migrated into uh into owner operations and getting his own truck went to went to uh the fuck he went to uh went to an option a uh, option and and just bid it on the truck you know and that's some you know that might be a good thing for some of you guys that's interested in getting your own trucks you know just go to a, op, a auction to see what they got to, to see what they got available and you probably go from there man instead of jumping on these companies and trying to lease on with these bullshit ass trucks and be hemmed up with these uh bullshit regulations and policies and all like that you you just go uh, to an auction in your in your area, you know, car auction, you know, or if they got some trucks, just go over there, do like he did, open up the hood, see what's up, bring a mechanic with you, you know what I'm saying? You can bring a mechanic and uh, let the mechanic go over it, you know, start up. Well, I, I don't think they let you, I don't think they let you start up the car. I, I think it's pretty much, uh, or the truck for that matter, I think it's pretty much as is, you know what I'm saying? You you know, you 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 take it as is. So, but once you buy the motherfucker, you're gonna have to get that bitch up off the 
up off the lot. And I think they only give you like a certain amount of time to to get that bad boy up out of there. If you don't, they're going to they're going to get it up out of there for you. So so, yeah, you know, there's there's plenty of ways of of going on our operations uh, or, you know, getting your own truck. You know what I'm saying? I, I've spoken to uh, a handful of people that went various different ways to to uh, owning their own trust. A young lady went in there, she brought her own trust. She got discouraged by the one company. She walked right across the street, slapped the money down like DMX and uh, and brought a truck from there. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, hopefully, uh, hopefully this is this this is inspirational, man. I mean, you know, a lot of a lot of felons, uh, a lot of felons turned truckers. You know, I had found had literally found success in the trucking industry. So, you know, if they can if they can do it, you know, future felons could probably do it too. I mean, again, I always go back to my to my saying is that where are you gonna find this kind of money at? You know what I'm saying? That's that I always go back to that to that question. You know, I always go back to that question it is where you going to find that kind of money at, you know, especially when you when you are felon and you coming out of prison and, you know, you 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 have to make a life for yourself, a life for your family. If 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 there's if 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 you have one, you have to make a life for your family. You have to make a you know, you have to make ends meet. But you you running into all these roadblocks that uh, that felons face when they come out, and you know it, it kind of discourages them and it forces them to go back into the life that they're trying to get out of. You know, there is it's hard for it's hard for a felon to come back out. And try to and try to migrate into uh, into normal society if they're not you know if they're not making no money you know or at least the kind of money that they want to make that's why some of these felons out there they take to you know they take to uh, entrepreneurship in different in different ways you know what I'm saying there's some felons that that got into entrepreneurship by helping out kids starting their own business and stuff like that. I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I think that's, that's, that's an awesome way for them to, uh, for Tim to, you know, do the damn, do the damn things financially because, you know, them trying to get back out here, trying to work a nine to five, or trying to work a McDonald's job or anything like that. They they don't want to do that, especially if they went to jail prior, you know, prior to going to jail, they was making X amount of dollars that they're so used to making. Now they, you know, they did they bid in jail. Then after they after they do they bid in jail, then they come back out to they come back out to what am I going to do? You know what I'm saying? You know, you you try to fill out applications to to try to make the money that you was making in the past to now making pennies that, that's going to pretty much discourage them to fall back into the life that they was in prior to come uh, prior to them going to jail. You know, so trucking opens up that opportunity for a lot of these felons that's coming out here. Now, I know a lot of you guys that looks at felons like, well, you know, they they gonna do something wrong. That's that's why you see some a whole lot of this negative shit that's going on in the trucking industry because of uh because of a felon. You know what I'm saying? And maybe that's true, but you can't put that on all felons. I mean, I know, I know a few. I know a few in the trucking groups. Uh, I know one of them, his name is Ace, holler back, you know, shout out to Ace. You know, he was a, you know, he was a convicted felon and he he found success in trucking. And then there's a, other, there's a couple of other guys that's, that's, that are felons that found success in trucking. 
you know, it's uh, you know, it's just like what Sharice says, the discouragement to find a company that'll give you that chance, you know, you're gonna probably run into that. Again, you know, with Western Express being out there, you know, the Western Express is like just about the end all be all with with trucking companies that will give felons a chance, you know, but it's just unfortunate that the company be on some bullshit too. You know, you you <laughs> they 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 come and tell you like, yo, bro, like, yo, you know, we we giving you this chance, so you're gonna have to eat what we give you. Not nah, like that. And that's why some that's why some of the guys that's at Western Express feel so fucking jaded because yeah, Western Express give me my chance, but they ain't giving me shit. They ain't paying me right. They ain't running me right. They doing me wrong and so forth and so on. So it's just, you just gonna have to, you just gonna have to pain. You're gonna have to take the pain and and rock your way through uh, two, three, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 a year to get your experience so that you can move on to a trucking company that will take care of you. You know what I'm saying? So to the felons that, that are coming out and, you know, that want to get into this industry, you know, take, you know, take the advice from Sharif. Don't let them know uh, that when you get out, just let them know when you caught the charge. So if you caught the charge back in uh, 2015, you let them know when you caught the charge because you already five years, you already five years expired and the trucking company just might overlook that and bring you in and, uh, and chop it up, man. So shout out to all the felons. If you want to come on to the Lockout Man podcast and, and share your story, your your success stories, no matter what it is, you know what I'm saying? No matter what it is and stuff like that, man, come on and share your stories because I'm sure that somebody, you know, that's coming out or that's been out or that's, that's having a hard time want to hear your story so they can get motivated. They can get inspired. They can get, uh, they can get a, 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 a blast of new relevance to say, hey, you did it, I can do it too. So if you guys wanna come on and chop it up, share this video, man, especially this video right here. You know, I, I'm thinking I'm gonna go ahead and probably premiere this video probably this, this weekend because it was so inspiring. If not, I will probably premiere this video with Sharif, uh, with Sharif probably on Wednesday. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm serious. This this was a real inspiring, uh, inspiring conversation with this man. I mean, he I mean, he literally, he literally came up from watching his parents uh deteriorate to drugs to being a drug dealer himself to doing a bid, and now he got his own truck and and he's about to come out here and and crush it so uh with that said everybody i do uh i do appreciate all you guys being here shout out to the people in the uh in the lom community uh that master chef trucking was going on yes do because i missed it now nah, don't worry about it bro it, you know like i said this right here i think i'm gonna bring it back searching 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 Searching, searching, and searching, and searching, searching.